Hey everyone, Lone Wolf here. So before the video begins, I just wanted to give you guys a quick announcement. For the next few weeks, I'm going to be redoing some of the older videos on my channel. Uh, the first four videos on my channel are the oldest ones there, so I figured I'd redo them just to freshen them up a bit, make them a little bit more current, if that makes sense. So I will be redoing them in the order they appear on my channel. So be careful where you camp will come first. Uh, then the House of Multiple Personalities, since that one was made second, then the Shapeshifter, and finally the Creature of the Deep. The images and the audio recordings will be different, and in Be Careful Where You Camp, there will be music, since there isn't music in the original video. To those of you who have already seen the original videos, I hope you guys enjoyed these new versions. And to everyone else, I hope you guys enjoy the stories. Let me know what you think of them in the comments below. And without further ado, let's get this party started. This is something I've been wanting to share with the internet for a long time. This experience has been burned into my head for the past 40 years, and I doubt I will ever recover. When I was 18 years old, my best friend Jack and I were planning a hitchhiking trip across the country from Bangor, Maine to Los Angeles. I had never really hitchhiked before, but Jack had, and he pretty much forced me into going with him. However, since I had never hitchhiked before, I decided it would be best if I went on some trips by myself to prepare for any unusual situations that might happen. I went on a few small trips around Maine and other neighboring states. On my final trip, I decided to go from Maine to New York and then go through Massachusetts to double back home. A young couple took me across the border into New Hampshire, and then a trucker took me a couple of hours into the state. By this time, it started to get dark and Jack told me that when the sun sets, drivers don't trust strangers anymore. The trucker dropped me off in a remote area, and the nearest town was several hours walking distance. I decided to seek shelter in a small forest lining the street. After a few minutes of walking through the woods, I found a good spot to set up camp. The woods provided a sort of cover for me, but I still brought a tent with me for instances like this. I pitched my tent and lit a fire outside to ward off any predatory animals. After I got settled, I pulled out a book that I had brought with me and began to read. After a couple of hours, I laid down and faded off to sleep. When I awoke, I expected it to be like 8 in the morning. Instead, I woke up to pitch black darkness. I knew for a fact that I wasn't in my tent. As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I realized I was laying in a bed in an unfamiliar room. There was a table and chair in one corner, along with a bureau and a mirror. On the other side of the room, the door leading out was wide open. I had no idea where I was or how far away my belongings were, and I really started to panic. I got up from the bed, walked over to the doorway, and peered out into the hall. I saw a staircase leading down into the main hallway which led into several rooms and had a big front door in the middle. The door had multiple padlocks on it. I slowly went down the stairs toward the door, but when I got to the bottom step, it creaked when I put my foot on it. I squeezed my eyes tight and clenched my teeth. That's when I heard it. Footsteps coming from one of the rooms upstairs. I ran blindly into one of the downstairs rooms, which happened to be the kitchen, and hid in one of the cupboards. I opened the cupboard door very slightly so that I could peek out undetected. Footsteps came down the stairs, and when they got to the doorway, I saw him. A tall, hulking figure stepped into the kitchen. He had freakishly long legs and arms. He was wearing a ripped button-up shirt and gray jeans stained with dirt. He had a tattered farmer-style hat, black gloves on his hands, and winter boots with spikes under them. He was also carrying a blood-stained axe in one of his gloved hands. The minute I saw the axe, a chill ran down my spine, and I knew I had to get out of this house. That was when it hit me. This guy must have brought me here after I fell asleep. He must have realized that his guest was awake and is searching the house for me. The guy looked around the kitchen for a few minutes, then turned around and walked back up the stairs. I waited a few minutes, to be sure, before opening the cupboard and stepping back out. I started looking around the kitchen for anything I could use to open the door or defend myself, but I couldn't find anything. I walked across the kitchen and into another doorway. 
The doorway led to a living room with some windows leading out to the woods behind the house. I tried to open the windows to escape, but they were nailed shut. I found a small hallway leading from the living room back to the front door. On one side of the hallway, halfway down, was another door. I walked over and opened the door, which creaked loudly. The door opened to a staircase leading down into a black abyss, the basement. I wasn't sure if I should go down there, but before I could think further, I heard the sound of footsteps coming back down the stairs. The guy must have heard the door creak open. I ran down the basement stairs and hid in a dark corner. I covered my mouth to shield my breathing as I listened to the footsteps come closer to the door. I saw the shadow of the man appear at the foot of the stairs for a few seconds, before I heard the slam of the basement door and all light disappeared. As my eyes adjusted to the dark once again, I began groping the walls in search of a light switch. Found it. As I flipped the switch, and the basement filled with light, I made a shocking discovery. I counted at least fifteen taxidermied human heads all over the room. Some of them were placed on pedestals, but most of them were mounted on the walls. The heads ranged from teenage girls and boys to older people, possibly in their late forties or early fifties. On the other side of the room was a large, blood-stained dissection table, along with two or three full body bags sitting in the corner. I felt like I was going to throw up from the fear I was experiencing. I wasn't the first unfortunate soul to get caught by this psycho. This guy has kidnapped innocent people, killed them, done who knows what to their bodies, and mounted their heads on his walls as if they were trophies. It was official. I had to get out of this house if I wanted to wake up tomorrow. Fortunately, on the dissection table, I found a vast assortment of tools including buzz saws, machetes, chainsaws, and scalpels. Among the tools, I saw a bolt cutter sitting on the corner of the table. I grabbed the bolt cutter and raced up the basement stairs. I dashed to the front door, and it seemed as though luck was on my side, as the bolt cutter managed to snip through the padlocks on the door. But before I could open the door and run, I heard the sound of heavy breathing right behind me. I took a look over my shoulder, and there he was, inches away from my face, axe raised in the air, and a hungry look in his crazed eyes. He swung at me with the axe, but I managed to duck out of the way just in time. I could feel the axe clip my right shoulder, and I saw blood beginning to pool around the wound. Before he could swing at me again, I threw the bolt cutter at him, which seemed to disorient him a bit. I thrust open the door and ran like there was no tomorrow into the dark forest. As I was running, I heard the loud bang of a gunshot. I turned my head to the house, and the guy was standing outside the open door with a shotgun in his hand. He shot at me a few more times, but fortunately, the bullets missed me. I ran as fast as I could into the dark cover of the forest without looking back. After a few minutes of running through the forest, I found a paved road. As I stepped out into the road, I saw the headlights of a car coming down the street. I stood in the middle of the street, waving my arms like a lunatic. The car tried to drive past me, but I wouldn't let it. The car stopped, and I explained everything to the driver. He drove me to the nearest police station, and I filed a report. I told him about the cabin in the woods, about the crazy guy with the axe, and about the trophies in the basement. They asked me a few questions, then escorted me to the hospital to get stitches on my shoulder. They drove me home the next morning. Needless to say, I told Jack what happened, and told him I wasn't interested in his hitchhiking trip. To this day, we are still in touch, and we have had some good memories, but I will never go camping in the woods again. My message to all, if you choose to go camping, be very careful where you go, and be sure to carry some sort of protection, because you never know who or what may be lurking in the darkness. What's up, everybody? This is the Lone Wolf here. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications and join the Lone Wolf Pack. If you guys want to send me a message, there will be a link in the description for my email account and my Twitter account. So if you guys have any personal scary stories that you want to share with me, feel free to send me a message on either of those, and I'll use your story in a future video. 
There will also be links in the description for the music artists that I use in this video, as well as the specific tracks in case you're interested in the music. And finally, if you guys have any constructive criticism for me, feel free to leave me a comment. I'm always looking for new ways to make this channel better, and all ideas are welcome. Until next time, you guys, stay spooky. And remember, the hunt begins when the moon is full. See you soon.